Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're going to talk about soldering, how to solder, and uh, yeah, some do's and don'ts and stuff, and some, you know, tips, like solder tips. Also, is it soldering or is it soldering? So there's a bunch of soldering videos on YouTube about how to solder all kinds of stuff, but there aren't in my opinion, very many good ones about actual guitar stuff. Now we've made a few in the past, but what I did was I went through all the comments on all those old videos to see if there was anything we missed, uh, any tips that you guys wanted to know from those other videos, stuff we might've missed, and put it into a new one. So that's what we're gonna do today. We also have a Skillshare course on how to solder, very in depth. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, that's been up there for a couple of years now, and people have found it pretty helpful as well. We're also going to dive into this on tonight. Well, it's the last Monday of April 2022, and we're going to do a hangout on our live Patreon tonight. Um, so you can go to patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone, and there's a tier there where you can hang out live with us, and we're going to dive into this a little bit more. I guess the first thing we need to do, and the number one most asked question of everything about soldering is, is it actually solder or is it solder? Why don't we say the L in the word solder, at least as Americans? There's a reason. The word solder comes from uh, a Latin word called, and I don't know how to pronounce this stuff, but basically I'll put it on the screen right here, solidaire. It looks like solidarity, and the reason for that is because that word means to join, unite, or stand together. So it's a it's a joining thing. So that is the Latin word. Now, as it moved into away from Latin and basically kind of turned to French, uh, they dropped the L in the pronunciation, which happened to a lot of words that were Latin. And then later on, for some reason, there was a re-Latinization of this word and the L got put back in. But in the American English vernacular, you did not pronounce the L. So if you go to like Merriam-Webster's dictionary, there is no L in the pronunciation. Now, if you go to the Cambridge dictionary and look at the English pronunciation of that, English English as in, the eastern side of the pond English, then they actually pronounce it solder. So there, it's not wrong or right, it's just where you live, but it's interesting that the word, what, the L was in there, it got taken back out, put back in, and some people still use it. That's probably the hottest question that was in the comments from the last videos. Now, let's get into actually how to do this stuff. First of all, let's talk equipment. I use this Heiko soldering iron. Now, I solder every day. I actually have two of these because I have a lead-free setup and a leaded setup, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. I have two of these. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, they're about $120 American at the time of making this video, so it might be a little expensive for some people. Now, up until this soldering iron, I was actually using a 40-watt Weller that cost right around $40. Equipment is the number one, number two. Equipment, mm, I don't know, it's half and half with something else we're gonna talk about in a minute. It is probably the most important thing. I know many of you are probably still using like a 15 or 20 watt soldering iron from like a Radio Shack or some other cheap electronics, you know, consumer electronics store. The problem is, and as you're gonna see as we get going, that heat matters because of how soldering works. So we need heat and we need good heat. This actually compensates for the loss of heat as the piece heats up. The Weller does not, but it's also $40 and it works really well. I used it a bunch. My buddy at Runway Audio in Nashville showed me this and I got it and it's awesome. As we go, I'll show you some of the other little things uh, and the important things, but that's the most important one. Now we get into this in great length, at great in great detail on our Skillshare course that's linked below. But basically the number one most important thing you need to know about soldering is it is not welding. We are not melting two pieces of metal together. Soldering is actually a chemical reaction that we are causing. So um, think of it as you've got two materials and when they are both hot, what happens is a migration 
uh, for the lack of a better word, a migration of some of the particles of each start to move into each other. It's not that they melt together like a welder, but they actually bond. It's actually a chemical bond more than it is welding or melting stuff together. So the most important thing we need to do is put an equal amount of heat into both components, whether that be a pot and a cap leg or a pot and a wire uh, or the output jack and a wire or the pickup covers or you know anything like that, whatever you're soldering together, we need to get the equal amount of heat into both of them at the same time and then introduce the solder. We are not welding or melting two things together. It's an important concept to get. Now, let's get some components on the table and I'll show you that in real time. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple of applications we've got here. I have a loaded pick guard that I am building for a client right now. On the bench, a uh, single, single hum with a five-way switch. The pots are coming in today, that's why those are not there. So let's look at a couple of things and little kind of practical things that we do when we solder. So the most important thing we need to understand about soldering is we need to get heat into the component. So we're gonna use our Kester 6040 uh, leaded rosin core solder. And I'm gonna just show you a very basic thing. Uh, first of all, so we've got our soldering iron heated to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where I personally like to solder at. I know that there's a lot of opinions about that, but that's where I like to solder. We're just gonna go ahead and put some solder on this switch right here. Now what we're gonna do is put it on there and heat it up. And at 700 degrees, it doesn't take very long. And see how easy that just flows right in there like that? That is because there is enough heat in that component. When you don't have enough heat, then the chemical reaction doesn't happen, and that's where you're starting to fight it. If you'll notice, I'm gonna go ahead and do this on another one, that I didn't have to, I'm not pushing, no pressure, nothing, this is just heat, so no pressure, literally just a touch, and then a touch of solder, and it like draws in there by itself once the heat gets there. I'm, I'll, do it again, I'll do it one more time. Let's put this right here, and then what we'll do is, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna just put this here and it's just, it's gonna fight me until the heat gets to the point where it's good. See how it starts to draw in like that? That is what you want. If you don't have enough heat and see that nice glassy kind of bubble of solder that happens there, it looks like all shiny. That means you have enough heat in it. Uh, if you don't, then what you're doing is actually trying to push the solder into it and you're trying to, mm, that what happens is that chemical bond doesn't happen and then um, if there's not enough heat in it and then it sticks to it, but it doesn't bond. There's a difference. That's why sometimes you'll have a solder joint that actually pops off afterwards because it stuck to it, but it didn't bond. You didn't get enough heat into it. It's a little bit harder with pots, so let me show you. Let's put some solder on the back of a pot like we would. In fact, let's just solder the cap to this pot. How about that? So here's the thing about this. The biggest thing you need to do when you're soldering is besides the heat is to be able to hold your work. A cold solder happens. They call it a cold solder when that chemical bond does not happen evenly all the way around the piece that you're trying to solder. And then it becomes a, like a microscopic crack in there. And that can cause noise and ground issues in a guitar big time, as well as just not being connected like your volume pot won't work or whatever. The reason for that typically is you don't get that heat, like I said, evenly around, but that can happen because your work moves. If your work is moving at all, the heat doesn't transfer evenly all the way around. So we've got to keep it still. So what I typically do, let me show you here. Let's just do this in real life. I take my pot, we'll do it fender style. Now see how this is wiggling all over the place. And if I were to just let this wiggle in here, then uh, it would give me a bad solder joint, right? Like it would just, it would wiggle all over. So what we need to do is kind of bend it to where it's nice and tight. So like a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll bend it against something else to kind of like create some tension there. And then 
now that the piece isn't moving, we'll put the heat against it. See, it's still moving too much. I'll show you a trick to this in a minute. So the heat, I put it there against both components, let the heat up, and the solder will actually just suck right in. All right, so this is exactly what I didn't want to happen, and this is exactly why I'm showing you. This is not a good solder joint. What happened is the heat went around the component, but it did not go through the hole, and it did not, well, it kind of did, but it kind of didn't, and I would imagine. Yeah, I don't like that solder joint at all. That looks ugly, and what happened is most of it like ran down the front of the leg because my work was moving all over the place. You do not want this. You want it to be nice and clean. So let's redo this and I'll show you how to do it better. Now what I've done here is I've actually put the pot into a control plate so that it holds it nice and still and I have it propped up with some needle nose pliers. So you see I've got my needle nose pliers there. I just set the the work into it and I just kind of clamp it with the needle nose pliers and everything is kind of see how it sits in there kind of like nice and stable so let's do it again nice even heat now that is how we like it to look nice and smooth nice and clean no little lines around the outside and all it was was holding the work still so that we did not have the stuff moving around now what we're going to do is we're going to take this backside and bend it around and ground it to the top of the pot. Now this is where we get some uh, problems sometimes with heat because we are actually soldering to the back of the pot. Now one of the things that people have asked me in the comments is why don't you use flux? Shouldn't you sand the back of the pot so that you get better bonding? If you have enough heat none of that matters for two reasons. The porosity of the metals, uh, being the capacitor leg and the back of the pot, have enough there to create this chemical bond if you have enough heat, if the heat is right. Uh, you don't need to sand it. That comes from welding. Again, this is not welding. There's You don't need to rough up any surfaces. This is not painting. It's a chemical bond. That happens at a microscopic level so sanding it makes zero difference whatsoever. As far as the flux goes, uh, the flux is actually in the solder. So we have rosin core solder that we use that on the inside of it has a little bit of rosin, which flushes the area as it solders again if the heat is good. So let's show you how easy this can be. A lot of people really fight with this. So now what I'm going to do so I'm just going to put it on top of the leg and it's going to heat through to the bottom of the, the pot there. And that should be it. Again, holding it still, making sure that it is nice and clean. Clip off our leg. And we're done. Now you're going to be like, you made that look so easy. But there's a couple of tips here that I'm going to give you that will make this look easy just for you. Just as, you know, easy for you too. Number one, make sure that you get enough heat. Make sure you have a hot enough iron. The links to the two irons that I use now and the one I used before are in the description. If you get those irons, uh, put this one at 700 degrees, put the orange Weller at three and a half on its little dial there and you'll be good all day long. Keep the work still. And then the other thing is, you notice that the tip on my soldering iron is pretty small. Most people will use like an eight, eighth inch or a quarter inch um, chisel, which is fine, uh, which it works great. I just don't personally like it. So this is the way I use it. But here's something I wanna show you. When I hold this on the work, I do not hold it on the end of the tip like this. Okay, uh, because that will not transfer as much heat to the piece that you're trying to solder. I actually put it on the side like this and that more evenly over a larger area transfers heat to your work. 
And what you're going to want to do and make sure that it happens is that you transfer heat to both things at the same time. This is probably the most difficult thing to do is take two wires and solder them end to end. Now you don't want to solder them end to end like this. You want to overlap them probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, something like that. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to have to pre-tin both of these things. So again, holding the work still, we're going to take our wire and our solder, and we're going to pre-tin it. Now this is pre-tinned wire, so this is kind of pointless, but for those of you that are using non-pre-tinned wire, that's what you're going to do. I'm going to show you how I do this. <laughs> I can actually typically do this one-handed, but... If I had a set of helping hands, this would be better, but I don't, so. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to solder these together. Bam. Now. That is a good solder joint. Now you could put heat shrink on that. You could do whatever. And I cannot pull it apart. See there? I can't pull it apart. That's a good solder joint. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and solder a wire into the pot. Uh, when we do that, we want to, again, keep this nice and still. So a lot of times you can just hold it to the side like that so that it's nice and solid because if it moves around again we're going to have a cold solder so put it here the soldering iron on there so where you're heating up the wire and the solder at the same time add the solder and give me a nice clean solder joint this is a question that I get a lot, is why didn't I put this through here and then hook the wire over so that we could have a mechanical joint? People want to talk about mechanical joints all the time. They want to say that you could put the wire through there and then like hook it around. Here's why. Because if you have to do a repair on this, it's an absolute pain in the butt to get it out of there. And you're going to be like, yeah, but it's stronger. How strong does it need to be? Because that did not break the solder when I did that. That broke the wire. The wire actually broke off. I can yank it so that the wire breaks off before the solder came loose. That solder did not come loose. So if you want to do that and make hooks in your work, you can do that. But if you've got to quickly change a pot, it's a pain in the butt. There's no point. And again, look at that. The wire is still in there. I broke the wire, not the solder. All right, so a couple of other little details besides holding it still and getting good heat into it, into both things, uh, keeping your solder tip clean and not leaving it on all the time, which is something I kind of do, but I work a lot and I'm soldering almost all day. So um, keeping your tip clean, I like to use one of these brass pillows. I do not like to use a sponge with water. I feel like it corrodes my tip faster. And this, these little brass things do a better job of keeping your tip clean. And they're not expensive. I'll leave a link to one in the description. Let's talk about solder. There's a lot of rumors and myths about what makes a good solder. 60-40 um, lead tin. That is the jam. I use a pretty thin one. I think this is uh, 0.031 inches. You could use thicker if you want, but I like a I like it to be neater. And if you use a big thick one, they can get kind of can get kind of messy. So I use a little thinner than most other people do. Uh, but that is some killer solder. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, it works great. Rosin core lead tin 6040. Now some people are going to say. Yeah, but 37, whatever, there's a couple of other, you know, um, percentages 
and people are going to say that they conduct better and all this kind of stuff and silver solder and all that. You can spend all that money and mess around all you want and I will guarantee you, you will not be able to hear a difference and it will be a lot of messing around and spending money for nothing. So 60-40 rosin core solder, the end. Now, some countries are very particular about not having lead in their solder or if you make the choice to not solder with lead, then you have to go with something like this. Um, this is also Kester, it's my favorite brand. Uh, this is ROHS compliant, so we actually have some clients uh, that we ship to countries where the stuff has to be ROHS compliant, so therefore we need to use lead-free solder. The downside to this is, is it doesn't flow as well. Uh, it's kind of sticky, it sticks to stuff. It's gotta be soldered really hot, like at least 700 or more, which can be tough on summer, some smaller gauge wires, like for example, these little wires that we use to hook up um, humbuckers to you know the coil wire. Soldering these at very high temperatures, you end up melting stuff. This makes it very difficult. It can be done, it needs to be done in certain circumstances, um, but lead-free solder adds another level of understanding heat transfer and making sure that it's just plain hot enough. So if you have to use lead-free solder, I'll leave a link to this too. Some people do have to use it. Now we could get super detailed with various types of components and how to do it and more close-up shots and all that kind of stuff. We have all of that on our um, Skillshare course. So there's a link to that in the description. Or if you wanna hang out with us on our Patreon Hangout tonight, it is Monday, April 25th, 2022, as you're seeing this video. And tonight we're gonna to have a live stream uh, where we really dive into this stuff and do some more camera close-ups and have a conversation about it. You can bring a project, uh, you can turn on your Zoom camera and you can be a part of it. And if you have a problem or a question or a bad solder joint you wanna ask about, we can do all of that stuff kind of live as we go. It's kind of fun. Uh, and for those of you that can't make it in person, there is a replay uh, version of that after it happens. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. If you have any other questions about this or anything else about guitar stuff, let me know in the comments as well as make sure you watch our news on Wednesday and our live stream uh, on Thursday where we do Q&A stuff. I think you'll really dig that as well. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you in the next video.